God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good and that is in the time. You are Excellency. Habatus Matthews Maria Van Megan. The Apostolic Nunsi of Kenya. And Southern Sudan. Your Grace. Philip Agnolo. Bishop. We are so blessed. We really appreciate. So God is blessed, and we really we cannot take that for granted. Thank you so much for your coming, and I humbly ask you to lead us in the celebration of the Eucharist. Welcome. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Most Reverend Archbishop. Metropolitan Philip Agnolo, the parish priest of his parish, Father Anthony, the other priests here present, religious, politicians, civil authorities, all of us, by the way, Christians, people who believe in that one God, as we said at the beginning, God is good, all the time. God is great, all the time. Huh? So, that is part of the nature of God, as we say. That, that's Him, that's the way He is. And that's why we come here to celebrate this Eucharist today. And I'm just very privileged to be with you this morning. Uh, I'm also the Nuncio to South Sudan, but before that I was already in Sudan and in Eritrea. And before that I was in Malawi. And in many ways, this place here today reminds me also of the good people in Malawi who are also very committed Christians as you are. So we are part of that very big universal church, the Catholic Church, which is made up of many races and languages and tribes. We still believe all together in that one God who revealed himself in Jesus Christ and therefore also that we are here today to celebrate the Eucharist to have communion with him. At the beginning of this Eucharist, as we prepare together for this great event of God who is good, God who is great, and God who most importantly is love and wants to give himself to us each and every time again in his body and in his blood, therefore at the beginning of this Eucharist, we want to acknowledge that many times we are not so good and not so great and not so loving, but we trust in His loving mercy for us. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
servants and mercifully increase the gift of your grace that may fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. For Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Rukyasayo <laughs> Ekano wacho niya, Rwoda, ki yekoda, Toki ika, Makirao kuma. Weuru, Aomnu pi, Mondo uluoko tiendu, Kendo uywe, Uywe etien yadini. Abiro, Kelo nuchemo, Mondo umedu teko, Eka unyan, Di nyime, Yuodu mus muse muse kilo irani neki duo keni ya mano ber tim kamano ko mano Abraham Loreto kodi Ibzara ehema mo wacho neni ya kaumogo moromo aditni ade mondo itego kuon pio pio. Eka no ringo, mo di e kuto, mo yero nyarwa, mo pugno. No mi e ja pichne, mo yange, kendo olo se pio pio. Eka Abraham, no kao adila, gi cheo, kodringo, mo se losno, mo keto e nyin yogo. Kale gi cheo, no chung e tiendia kori toge. Bange ne gipenjo Abraham ni ya. Ere Sarah chedi no loko ge ni ya. En ehema ka. Wendo no no kwacho ni ya. Anadogi iri e kinde makama higama biro. Kendo anu anka sara chiegi ose nyuolo nyati mawuwi watnya sae
Kendo wapuju jiduto ya uri ya kuduto. Mwendo wano kungato kangato kuwa mufuni mosegi kare mwari ngre kristus. called Mary, who sat at the feet of Jesus and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Mother, Mother, you are anxious and troubled about many things. One thing is needful. Mary has chosen the good portion which, which shall not be taken away from her. The gospel of the Lord. So, my dear people of Sugomero, <laughs> there we are. And I was thinking as we were reading through the readings, of course they were read in a language I do not understand. I think you need to be very intelligent to speak that language. So that's a compliment to you. You seem to have more brains than me. Now, in that first reading we heard about Abraham and Abraham he got his visitors, the three visitors that came up to him in the heat of the day. And Abraham, who was a shepherd and he was living in tents because he would always follow his flock, of course. And he was sitting there in his tent in the hot heat of the day and the holy man can get very hot. And he was sitting under the oak of Mamre. The oak of Mamre, which is a which are big trees, like you, who are sitting today here in the shadow of the trees. And in a sense, you are like Abraham, Abraham and Sarah. And you are receiving a visitor. 
And the visitor is this time not an angel or angels from heaven, but angels are also messengers, messengers from God. But of course, I'm not a messenger for God, I'm a man of flesh and blood, but I'm a messenger of the Holy Father, of the Pope. In fact, the word apostolic nuncio, this word nuncio, which is a difficult word, means as much as the one who announces, who announces the word of the Holy Father. And it was a few months ago already that I was in Rome at the beginning of my new assignment. As I mentioned to you at the very beginning of the Eucharist, I had been in Sudan and Eritrea for a long time. And then the Holy Father decided that he wanted me to be appointed to Kenya and South Sudan. And as I came to him in the month of April, by the way, I just met him not long ago again, also in the month of June. But in the month of April, he talked to me about that new assignment, that new appointment in Kenya. And he still mentioned to me that he remembered very well his visit to your country, our country now, in 2015, 15 that was? 2015, and maybe some of you were also present at that visit, and if not, I'm sure you followed it on radio and TV. And the Holy Father, as he mentioned to me, was very moved. Hey, they were able to fix it, you see. <laughs> so they were very much, he was very much moved by that visit to Kenya. I'm very much impressed by the faith of you Christians, Catholics of Kenya. And me myself, who have been here now like for two and a half months, I, two and a half months ago, I came from Khartoum to Nairobi. Me myself, and I've mentioned that already, I think also to Monsignor Philip, I'm very much impressed by the depth of your faith, by your commitment to Jesus Christ by, by your love for the Virgin Mary. So first of all, I would like to express my thanks for that, for that great faith of you, which is of great help not only to you but also to me, because I'm all, also only a very simple Christian as you are. And I myself, like you do, I try to follow in the footsteps of the Lord as good as I can. And like you, at times I struggle. And like you, I trust in the mercy of God. And like you, I go for confession and I go to receive the Holy Eucharist because I know that in those sacraments I receive the love of God, the mercy of God. So the Holy Father sends his greetings to you, his love to you, his blessing to you. And he mentioned to me when I was there just before I left the office there where he is working, he said, and don't forget to tell the people of Kenya that I pray for them, that I pray for them each and every day. So be aware of that. The Holy Father prays for you. And it is of course also in that same love and awareness that he appointed Archbishop Philip to the Metropolitan Archbishop of Kisumu. And yesterday, as an extra sign of that love and commitment, he granted to Archbishop Philip the pallium and maybe you should come forward Archbishop for a second so that the people at least may see what that is. As you see it's all around his neck as he mentioned himself yesterday.
Maybe you want to explain something about it yourself? <laughs> I will explain just briefly, my dear people of God, and then I'll give the nuncio. Yes, now the voice of the Holy Father continue. The pallium is made out of the wool, wool from the sheep, from my sheep. Pallium is a sign that we are shepherds. The pallium is also a sign that even as shepherds, we have challenges. As a shepherd, he can take care of his sheep through darkness, through night. Sometimes he has nothing to cover on. Even the sheep might be having something there, wool, to cover to avoid the cold. But now, the symbolic is that we come on, it's a big mandal in the olden days. We come on as we sleep at the door of the house of the sheep. We put on a, a, the gold skin, which is now a pallium, so as to protect the sheep away from the enemies, away from the animals that come to eat the sheep. The pallium now, in the spiritual manner, is a union between the Holy Father and the local church. That is now the local church here, the Diocese of Kisumu, and its metropolitan age, which is Rodwa, Vitale, Eldoret, Ngoma, Kakamega, Kisumu itself, Oma Bay, and Kisi. We keep on doing that. He was the Holy Father explained uh, they explained yesterday, it has three tones. These are three nails. Jesus Christ was hung on, on the cross. They are here, you will see them. The time you come to see it. And they explain that on it, the, uh, the tone, one tone is on the shoulder here, and on the crosses, the shoulder and here, and in front. Uh, the shoulder here, these are the tones that are within the very church itself. Sometimes the devil has come these days, he wants to work within the church. He wants to bring the church down the church, but these crosses are to help the, the, the bishop who is in charge of the metropolitan to support the church from within, that it makes it stronger. And you notice that even on the shoulder, there are other crosses. These crosses, as it was mentioned yesterday, in front, the cross belongs to the priest. That's an example. That's just a example. It belongs to the sign of priests, who are supposed to go far, much forward to serve the people of God, uh, they are in front. But sometimes you can be a burden, so they are across the bishop. So, so. And then on the shoulder here, on the shoulder, one the right and left, the crosses belong to the sisters and to the brothers. Sometimes they are, they are too heavy. They can fall down the bishop. And behind, behind, there are other crosses. Eh? Yeah, those crosses here, they, are, they belong, they are yourselves. They are yourselves. They are yourselves. You are the Christians. So you see, I'm carrying everything. My head is only the one is being seen. What <laughs> But when my head is seen, you also you are seen, isn't it? So we are the church. We are seen, we are visible, we are the church. And that is what it is. This body, it has a lot of symbolism. And the most important symbol is that we are united by the, with the Holy Father and the universal church. And the spirit of Christ, who is the shepherd, is actually there life within us. And as he explained, he is now the herald of the good news from the Holy Father. So. Thank you very much, Your Excellency, the Nuncio, who have come to explain this mystery of life, of our salvation, the people of God here. Thank you. You have been doing, doing it well. Keep telling them. Yes, thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. By the way, if you still look through that pallium, you see there is a tassel, like one in the front and one in the back. And it's about as the Archbishop explained, it's about the Good Shepherd, of course. And so, fastened in the front, it's like the sheep who pull him. And sometimes he has to resist because it's sometimes the sheep go into a direction that the shepherd should not go. And this of Kisumu and of the other diocese around Kisumu. And he is connected in a special way with the Holy Father. So that's like this two-way connection. So the Holy Father puts a lot of, of, of trust in him, like he's nearly an apostolic nuncio. Huh? So once again, congratulations with that. We were talking about hospitality. 
about Abraham giving hospitality to the three angels and how the angels, and you have heard that in the story, announced to Abraham and to his wife Sarah that next year they would get a son. Do you still remember, by the way, the name of that son of Abraham? What is the name of that son? It was not mentioned. Isaac. And why was he called Isaac? You know that? Because Isaac in Hebrew means I laughed. And what did Sarah do when she was in the tent and she heard that the angels had said that she would become pregnant of a son? What did she do? She laughed. And why did she laugh? Because she was too old, she thought. This is not going to happen. It didn't go with her anymore according to the way of women, it says. She was not fertile anymore. So, and there at a very old age, she still got this son, Isaac. And I was thinking, now imagine that Abraham would have said, wow, it's too hot today. And he would have been sitting there in his tent and he would have seen these people fast. And instead of inviting them, he would have closed the tent and say, okay, let me hide behind the tent so they don't see me. Then this whole story would not have happened, I imagine. And we would have been in a very different situation. And there you see how important hospitality can, can be. Sometimes by receiving guests, you receive angels. You know, when the Holy Father appointed me to Kenya, and I've been already a number of years in Africa, some people said, because I'm originally from the Netherlands, some people said, ah, it wouldn't be time for you to go back to Europe. And I had something, no. I love to be with the people of Kenya, I love to be with the people of Africa, exactly because they are such loving people such hospital people. You know, the story of Abraham could have happened also here. You would have received these angels, I'm pretty sure, because you are people who are very open to hospital. You have this virtue of has hospitality, which not all people have, and you have it. And in that sense, the church can also continue to grow in Kenya and can continue to spread its values, the values of a true human life. And speaking of which, uh, the Archbishop, uh, no, the, 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 the parish priest mentioned there are also some politicians here and some uh, from the civil authorities, where are they seated? I greet you from afar, yeah? What I just wanted to mention, and it is a bit towards you, is that you, Kenya, you are an important country. You are one of the most important countries in the continent of Africa. You are a country which is strong. We are a country to which many other countries look up to for guidance, guidance and, 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 and authority. I think that Kenya in many ways should try to step up his role as a regional leader in Africa and to be also more committed to international African peacekeeping negotiations because, you know, I sometimes think the Kenyans do not understand how important they are for this region. <laughs> you have much more value than you think. So, to our politicians, you know, try to work on that. I think it's very important. And I do see that, that the president is moving in that direction but it could be a notch more, maybe. So I think that's very, very, very important that we that we step up that, that commitment. Going back to hospitality, Martha and Mary, they are both there in the house. By the way, this Martha and Mary, you also meet in other stories. They were sisters. Does anybody know that? They were sisters of whom? Oh, you're very well, I'm dying, but I see that already. 
They were sisters of Lazarus. Lazarus who was a very good friend to Jesus. And even this, the, the Bible experts think that Jesus, when he went to Jerusalem, many times he would take his lodging, take a rest at the house of Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. That house, by the way, was on the Mount of Olives, so not far from the city center of Jerusalem. And in fact, the tomb of Lazarus, you can still visit till the day of today in the very city of Bethany, which is on the Mount of Olives, not far from Jerusalem. Martha and Mary, both very dedicated to Jesus. Uh, that's another thing that happened, by the way, in the Bible, and you see it here happening again. Jesus was not only followed by the 12 apostles, was not only followed by the disciples, but also by many women who followed him. And Martha and Mary, Mary of Magdalene, but also others, they were part of that group. It's a bit like here in the parish. Uh, this morning, it were the women who took the forefront, it were the women who took the initiative. By the way, those poor boys of, 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 the, of the honor guard, they were pushed a bit to the side at a certain point because all these women that were coming in. Huh? But these are the women many times also in the church who really keep things going. And I think that the parish priest agrees on that one, no? He doesn't dare to say <laughs> But many times that's the case. And why? I think it also has to do with life. A woman in a certain stand, sense is closer to life than a man because she carries a life in her womb and she is very close to her children. So she feels where the source of life comes from more maybe than a man at times does. And that's also why women are closer to the church, closer to the Eucharist, because they feel they are more in need of that source of life which they find in Jesus Christ. And that is also what Martha and Mary were always with Jesus, following him wherever he went, and especially when he was in Jerusalem. And then Mary, of course, in a special way, as she was seated at the feet of Jesus. That brings me also to the fact that is and I've mentioned it in another place in Nairobi, how important it is for us, also for us, by the way, as bishops, also for us as priests, also for us as lay people, to pray. To pray. Not just the Hail Mary and Our Father, that's a very good start. But also to pray maybe at times a bit in silence. So that we can listen to the voice of the Lord that he really can inspire us, that he really can show us his love. Because, yes, here in Kenya we have this tradition from God is good, God is great, that is his nature, and in eternity, true. But how many of us do really experience that in their lives and in their hearts? In order to experience that, you need to pray you need to dedicate some of your precious time during the day to prayer and talking to the priest and here to the religious the bravery then is not enough you need to have some silent prayer during the day a bit like mary did she was not sitting there at the feet of jesus with her rosary and her prayer book because she was listening to the lord himself she was all ear and eye for him. And that is something we have to do each and every time again in order that we ourselves will be inspired and go on, can go on serving him. And of course, Martha, in a certain sense, she was right. She was working very hard. She was taking care of the hospitality in the house and she finds that her sister is just sitting there and she feels that she is a bit lazy. But of course, when Jesus says that Mary has chosen the better part, he doesn't want to say that what Martha did was wrong. Of course not. 
But it is like an example to tell us if you are committed to the word of God, if you listen to it, if you are inspired by the love of God in your life, then also you will be able to serve Him better, to serve Him more, to serve Him more dedicated. Finally, as the Archbishop was saying, the pallium has to do with the wool, the wool of the sheep, the wool of the sheep that is cut every January and from there these palliums are woven in Rome. The Holy Father says that all of us we have to take the smell of the sheep, wanting to say that we should work with the poor, with the poorest of the poor, because in them it is, it is God who reveals himself. Think of Jesus when he was born in the stable in Bethlehem. I look also here to our children, little boys and little girls here in front of me. They in many ways are the angels that come to us. In many ways it is God who reveals himself to these children. And the more we are dedicated to him, to them, the more we serve them, the more we serve God in our lives the more we receive his mercy and love, the more we will see him from face to face. We continue to celebrate the Eucharist. God gives himself to us, his body, his blood for us, completely. God does not hold back. And this time, it is not we who are give hospitality to him, but it is he who gives our hospitality to us. Celebrating the Eucharist is like entering in the house of God and being received by God himself, who serves us, who washes our feet, who gives us food and drink. Let us then prepare ourselves now for that great event where God wants to share with us his body and blood, his son, who died for us on the cross and rose from the dead. Amen. be watered from these springs of all blessing and life. Tuko mbele sako baba. Baba nikiomba na kuamini yote yanayosikana kwako. Bila wewe baba hatuwezi chochote. Asubuhi ya leo baba nina maombea ma brother, ma sister, hata na walimu wote na ma bishop na hata pop. Oh God, may you heal their sick and give them 
Lord, may you raise their thoughts in eternal peace. Take them to the best destination. May the Lord hear us. You to one God, we want to thank you for this wonderful day. Almighty Father, we want to pray for all the families all over the world. May you give them strength and may you give them support so that they may be like the holy family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. May the Lord hear us. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, I pray for our government. May you give His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta the wisdom and the knowledge as it is stated that the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. I ask them, the, the people in the government to have the moral values so that they have the energy, the determination to fight corruption, political thuggery, economic sabotage, so that they may lead us in a peaceful way. I ask this short prayer, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Lord, hear us. <laughs> Ile <laughs> And Mr. Mshawandai, Dr. Eric Odawa, he prayed that he can be changed, he took my bed, who take home my kind of families, my given, he prayed my bed, who take home my head, he prayed Nyakapati Waduto, for Jesse Minari Duto, when he prayed for sisters, Mubiro, when he prayed for take home my head, he can be changed, he can be changed, he can be changed, he can be changed, Got Nasai Wakwa Monica Nasim was a Biroka Mar Father Anton was a Biroka Mondo of Bioko, my use. Got Nasai Mona Lubit Moko to Wakwa, got Nasai and did work at a party, Jopun, Joma to work to touch what you think in school, Matinia school would. Wakwa, what Nasai Mona Lubit Moko to Wakwa, got Nasai and did for this task, Mad Anton. Wakwa, what? Prayer for the age, Almighty Father, we pray so that you may bring up those who are aged. Although their body weakens, grant that their faith may be strong, and at the end meet death in serenity. May the Lord hear us. May your mercy we beseech you, O Lord, be with your people who cry to you, so that what they seek at your prompting, they may obtain by your ready generosity. Through Christ. Our Lord.
Why you good sound? Why you good sound? Why you good sound? Why you good sound? Let's go. Grow me mal. Grow me mal. Ya 
Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sacrifice of God, for the praise and the glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His servants. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, except we pray this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy, as you blessed the gifts of Abel. So that what each that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you laid the foundations of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed man in your own image and set humanity over the whole world in all its wonder. To rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works through Christ our Lord. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. And therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, that the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, 
which will be given up for you. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your people in church and earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Philip Daniel, our Archbishop, Archbishop Hubertus, present here, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to, you, to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, that they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow the world, all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on us as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Kingdom, the power, and the glory of you, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant you peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. <coughs> May the God of all consolation order your days in his peace and grant you the gifts of his blessing. Amen. May he free you always from every distress and confirm your hearts in his love. Amen. So that on this life's journey you may be effective in good works, rich in the gift of hope, faith and charity, and may come happily to eternal life. Amen. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace.
to say we are humbled with your visit. Thank you, His Grace, for choosing our home parish to bring His uh, Excellency. We lack words of gratitude, but we promise uh, lots of prayers for you. Lots of prayers as um, you also wear the pallium and we are very proud of it. And thank you for teaching us that we have given you some weight on your shoulders. And remember, there are always people who will burn candles and make it always lighter. May God bless you and thank you. This is St. Michael Catholic Parish, Sigomre. We have uh, 16 out, out stations. So we thank you for choosing Sigomre, your grace, uh, Archbishop Philip, our beloved Archbishop, for thinking it wise to choose Sigomre as the destination of the nuncio after conferring Palium on you. We are very grateful. And as speakers are saying, we lack words. We really lack words to express our gratitude. It is historical that you are here. Now I take this opportunity to welcome His Grace. I thought you were going to sing that song at the time, at the time of uh, giving communion, and uh, not giving communion, but giving sadaka. He sang the last song. What did, what did you sing? Yeah, that one. I thought you were going to sing for me that one. <laughs> Thank you very much. You see, I'm happy, is it? Yeah. I'm happy, and also you know you are very happy. Yeah. And you see we are here, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I'm here, and I know the Nuncio is also here. But as he said, he's here as a corpse, you know, our corpse representative. So when we see him, we see the Pope is here, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So you see the Pope is happy? Yes. So the Pope sees you, you are happy also, isn't it? Yes. That's the message you will get. No, that's also one. I want to say thank you very much to your Excellency Nuncio. Most important, I want to say thank you very much for the word you shared with us. You shared the way I've never known of Abraham. I've never thought of Mary, the sister to Martha, but it was all about us. And you began very well by telling us we are the Abrahams, actually. We are the Abrahams and we, our work, our responsibility before God is to invite people, others, to come closer to, to God, to come closer to God. And I was very encouraged when he also mentioned that uh, uh, God, Abraham was found in the moment of prayer, sitting in the shade like this one. Those, you hear that voice, that sound? You hear it? Hear any sound? What do you call that one? Eh? Onyiri. You call it what? Onyiri. Yeah, you know, that was the sound that was all over there. When Abraham was just relaxing under a tree, very hot one, very hot weather. And this, it came that God sent people who, whom he received as people's, God's own messengers. And we say thank you very much for that message and it spread and went out to all of us that we are called to be at one time or another to have a moment of prayer and silent prayer in our lives. This is very important for a parish like this one so that we internalize the meaning of God in our presence, in our ministry, in our families. So, so, so that we internalize. And I think it's an invitation the nuncio is a diplomat, so he said it very diplomatically, but it was really an invitation. So, so uh, yeah, I said, and even as politicians, we are like Abrahams. We like, and that is why our country is well placed up there, because we are under the shade of a tree when things are seen, it's hot, it's burning, everything is doing, but 
under that shadow tree where people are coming to look for stories, they will find you there. And I think we should be in that mood of prayer. So I think the one I got to encourage there, and I want to encourage all of us, including everybody, including every everybody, is that sense of prayer. Let us take our Sunday as a Sunday for prayer. Sunday for what? For prayer. I want to call you, even when you are a businessman, even when you are a business. businessman, whatever your business is, even if you are a politician, whatever your politics is, even if you are a what? It's a joke. <laughs> whatever you are, you are? Keep Sunday for worship. So, so uh, Keep Sunday for worship and come and listen to God. I think He has left us a very important environment, a situation that when we live in that situation, this place will be a place that evangelization will continue in a wider manner. So, sir, we have been given a mission to be before God and to pray where the world is making noise, where the world is making a lot of noise. Today there is a lot of noise. There is a lot of noise. There is a lot of noise of theft. There is a lot of noise of killing. There is a lot of noise of what not. And all these noises are meant to cut you from God. But I want to tell you, like you are shepherd, spare your moment, spare your time before God and pray. And call and tell him, God, what I'm doing, I'm giving you 10% of my life. 10% of? My life. 10% kumi fungula kumi kwa? Kumi kwa nini? Kwa mia. Fungu kwa fungu kumi kwa mia la maisha yangu. Sawa sawa? Kumi kwa mia la maisha la? Maisha ya? Yangu. And come to church and be in that silence, listen to the word of God. Because God is calling you. He's calling you to be a mother. He's calling you to be a politician. He's calling you to be a businessman. He's calling you for everything. But they say like St. Paul, how shall they hear that they have been sent to be those politicians, good shepherds, everything without hearing the word of God? So you are sent and you come here to listen that that word of God may reach to the families, may reach to the families. Number two, I want you to be proud. I want you to be proud, proud and say thank you, God. And say what? Thank you, God. eroka, eroka man. For the Holy Father to be here in His presence today and give you blessings, which are not a mean thing. They are blessings that go to every individual of you. And as you go out there, you visit others, and others visit you. You say. Blessings be to God. As he said, God is, God is, Nyasai be, Nyasai la, Nyasai is be, Nyasai be, and Nyasai what else? Nyasai teko. See you. And after Nyasai what again? Nyasai he? Era. Nyasai what else? And And go out there and tell the people after coming from this church today with such good news. Tell people, look at me. Look at me, what I'm doing. The love I'm expressing for the sake of God, look at me. Because God, God is good to me. And do it like I'm doing it. So, so, so I want to encourage you to go home and go everywhere and be proud of that. The blessings that you have received here from the representative of the Holy Father are blessings that are very unique. I express a very unique, unique. They are very special and carry them to your people. So, if you are planning today, Baba, if you are trying today, box your mom, your mama, forget. <laughs> so, so, if you are planning to do what? Box your mama. The box mama. Okay. Okay. So, what? Okay. In the law? With? You. With? Okay. Forget. God has touched your heart. Mama, if you are planning today, to say, to speak very loudly, your papa, forget. God says, speak gently and 
ya baba will listen hiyo hiyo toto you understand baukwa akawa baukwa akawa sahani baiskeli giza kiboko chapati na yesu wa watu wote sawa sawa yesu wa watu wo? wote so i think he was telling us actually the reality is that jesus is for us all let us embrace him let us embrace embrace him and once you embrace him you allow him to change you you become a very different person whom people look and say ai is this the person i knew alikuwa muongo alafu sasa ni mu alikuwa kitu kingine sasa ni mzuri so we thank god for him to, for him coming here today yet he has brought us is really what the holy father would have brought us as people in um, here uh, in whatever life we are living there is a special way he has talked to us he talked to you to us he talked to the our children who are here he talked to everybody let us listen very keenly so that as we go back home reflect on those words reflect on those words and with these words god will bless you with these words god will bless you for that reason uh, normally you know in when is here we want to be official so so to ka kishi kishi but is toy aibu ndogo ndogo so so aibu nini aibu ndogo ndogo nini eh eh ah matini matini hiyo eh toy pra kubwa kubwa sivyo ya kwa hivyo hata nafikiri siku ya leo father atapanga ya kwamba kwa sababu hata pia zenye mnachukua zingine zitaenda kuonekana na baba mtakatifu sivyo hivyo atapanga ya kwamba wote tunakuja tunapanga tunachukua picha tunachukua picha kwa mfano unaofaa sawa sawa eh alafu sitakuwa zile ambazo tunaita officials alafu picha official alafu zingine zitaenda alafu zitachukuliwa penye mnataka baadaye sawa sawa ya kunae kama nimekuwa na bani nimesahau nataka kuchukua nafasi hii ni mwalike E, mgeni wetu wa heshima atuongeleze atuongeleshe alafu ndio father atakuja kufanya mambo yake what should i say after this your grace uh you said it better than i did hey i think you really should become the apostolic nuncio here <laughs> dear people of sigomre where is the engineer i said better this time <laughs> Yeah with all these languages the old hat gets a bit mixed up at times you know So once again thank you very much for receiving me as a representative of the Holy Father and I was thinking continuing a bit on the story of Abraham we didn't read it today but soon after the angels had visited abraham and sarah got pregnant and she delivered a son whom she called isaac he abraham on that spot on the oak of mamre and then also his son isaac by the way they built an altar an altar in honor of the lord because said abraham god is here and actually today we did the same thing down there we revealed the new altar outside and it's like a testimony to our faith saying god is here we are all abraham and we receive god in the form of an angel in our midst receive god as 
he comes to us in Jesus Christ in the Eucharist. Once again, not much to add, just to say, as I mentioned before, I've been Nuncio in Sudan, in Eritrea, also now in South Sudan, had been there before also in South Sudan. Once again, you know, people, they love Kenyans and they look up to the Kenyans because, as the engineer was saying, you know what it means in, in Arabic? It means like you have brains. Huh? You are people who are very well educated. You are with the leaders of Africa. Don't never forget that. And go forth in that. Lead Africa into the stream of nations, into an ever brighter future. Because the future is with Africa. It is Africa that will lead this world in 30, 40 years from now, you will be, and it is already coming, the most important continent of the world. Keep that in mind. And for that, I pray. For that, I, 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 I work. For that, I will keep on asking blessings from God for the people of Kenya. Thank you very much. Association, they have got gifts to present, but just before that, they'll explain the meaning of these symbols because in Africa, every symbol has a meaning. So. Your Excellency, in the African tradition, you always appreciate the visitor and give him a lot of respect. So, as a sign of respect. We, the Catholic Men Association, offer to you this ship. This is what you use to symbolize peace. Because you need peace for good life. So I need to use it. You need to use it. This one. This one. This one.
Before us, we have a cake to cut, and the cake symbolizes unity and um, togetherness in Africa. It's only a meal that will reconcile those who are having an enmity. And uh, the cake is symbolically white and blue. If I put it into our religious context, we have the colors of peace and the colors of Mary to, to help us cut this gift, a sign of unity. Yes. sure why you chose Sigombre, but there must be a reason, right? Yes. Your Excellency, yesterday I was turning 50. I was turning 50 years yesterday, and Father Futa celebrated Mass for me. I think that is one of the reasons why you came. So, so thank you very much for coming for my birthday, and thank you very much for gracing this occasion. Allow me to also say this, to thank His Grace, Philip Agnolo, for having graced this occasion, for having brought us a guest, and having been very good to us. Let me thank everybody, if I've not mentioned you. Are you done? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One more minute. We're done with you. We smile a bit. The parish council never smiled. Ah, yeah. Thank you. Wonderful our political leadership and you will remember this this photo of peace men in black are you ready yeah. i am who is the official photographer so that we end it when you're done Nani. Chop, chop, chop. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. that is the association of the religious fathers and priests Chairperson of Joachim and Anne to come.